It's a nice morning. Uh, we meet again for a session of uh, financial reporting. So this is your usual expert in the matters of financial reporting, that is CPA Duno Choi. So for today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, accounting for the insurance funds. So right now, in the jurisdiction of Kenya, you know that uh, these various insurance firms, starting from the big insurance firms to the small insurance firms. So under these insurance firms, obviously you know that uh, this is the area whereby the parties goes to insurers against certain, certain risks. So let's say, for example, if you have a car, uh, you can insure your car against, let's say, accident. Even an individual can insure his life. So let's say that uh, you will be assured whereby you will be contributing premiums uh, so that uh, maybe, God forbid, after the period your life comes to an end, uh, there is uh, something uh, the beneficiaries will get in return. So now to look at this uh, scenario of insurance firms on how, again, they test this topic, so the main thing we have to look for is from the part of uh, the terminologies. So we will start with the terminologies. So of which the first terminology I will start with is concerning uh, uh, the premium. So the premium, obvious, these are obvious the amount received or receivable uh, from the insured parties. So remember that uh, the way I've said, for example, let's say you have a car, then uh, you have insured your car against the risk of an accident. So remember that you could be contributing premiums to the insurance firm. So if it was to be insurance. So the premiums you contribute to the to be insurance forms the major part of the income for the to be firm. So premiums is all about the amount received or the amount receivable from the insured par parties. So they form the major part of source of revenue for the insurance firm. Then now, on the example I have used, for example, now you insured your car against the, the accident. Then let's say the accident occurred. So you have to claim. So you have to go ahead as the insured party, you have to go ahead and claim uh, from the insurance party to compensate you for the risk which you had insured against. So this is now brings me to the second uh, terminology, which we say claim. So which is all about the amount payable to the insured parties about the risk occurrence. Then now you will find that uh, some insurance will have to follow up to check if the risk you insured against are the one which occurred. Eh? So again, uh, once they follow up and they find that, yes, this is the risk which occurred, they have to approve your claim to be paid. They have to prove your claim to be paid, to be paid. But some, now you will find a scenario whereby they have approved, yes, that the claim, the risk against which you insured your asset against occurred in the real sense. So the relevant, uh, claim to be paid has been approved, but you will find that they have not paid. So that one, we call it uh, claims intimated. So is the amount of claim approved, but have not yet been paid by the insurance firm. So that is the claim intimated. Then now after the claim intimated, after the claim intimated, I have to move to another terminology, very major uh, terminology, called reserves for an expired risk, or we call it an earned premium reserve. So we call it an earned premium reserve. So what about these uh, reserves for an expired risk or an earned premium reserves? So let's say, for example, there's an insurance firm A, Obvious, we have a relevant uh, insurers who has uh, insured again as a uh, certain risks in this uh, insurance firm. Yeah. So, as the insurance firm, we always project 
that these are the premiums we are going to receive in the future. But what if what we projected is never received? Uh, yes, we projected that these are the premiums we are going to receive, but what if they will never be received? So that is why you find that uh, the insurance firm puts aside reserves to cater for those future premiums which may not be received from the insurance parties. And that is what I call the reserves for an expired risk or an earned premium reserve. Then now there's another terminology. There's another terminology called commission seeded and the commission accepted. So commission seeded and commission accept, accepted. So this comes in uh, from the aspect of when there's reinsurance. So you know that uh, one insurance firm can insure against another, another insurance firm. So reinsurance is a contract. So specifically now, for example, you are asking what is reinsurance. So reinsurance is a contract where the insurance firm eh, insures itself with another insurance firm. That is what we call reinsurance firm. Eh? Reinsurance firm, firm. So let's say we have an insurance firm A and we have insurance firm B. So insurance firm A had transferred a risk to insurance firm B. And let's say now you are preparing the books of insurance firm A from that perspective. So I want to bring a, a close this aspect of commission seeded and accepted. So to start from commission seeded, we always say that it's the amount of the commission receivable from reinsure, reinsurance. So the commission receivable from reinsure, reinsurance. So, and that one is treated as a current asset. So for example, A had transferred a risk to insurance from B. So remember that he's supposed to receive a commission from B. So it's like now A, in short, it's like A had a certain client, eh? but A was not capable to hold the risks of those clients. So what A did, he transferred the risk of these clients to another insurance firm, that is insurance firm B. Yes, A has clients to deal with, that is the insurance, but now A is not capable to hold the risk of this uh, insurance. So what he did, he transferred the risk to B. So it's like A gave business to another insurance firm. So which means that he's supposed to receive the commission in return. Eh? So that's why we say that commission seeded is the amount of commission receivable from reinsure, reinsurance. Then what about now commission accepted? So that is, this is now the aspect of commission which is payable to the insurance, to the reinsurance B business. So for example, now insurance firm B had given business to insurance firm A and you are preparing your books from the perspective of insurance firm A. So remember that this A must pay out the commission to the, to the firm B. So that is a concerning commission. That is concerning the commission uh, accepted and the commission uh, ceded. So the commission accepted and the commission C seeded. So we have other we have other terminologies and these terminologies include like uh, bonus in the reduction of premiums. So from the even the definition itself. So bonus in reduction of premiums. So you can see like now there was a bonus which the insurance firm was supposed to pay the insurance. And at the same time you know that the insurance, the insurers, so these are the individuals who have insured eh? Again, it's a certain list in the insurance firm. So instead of these uh, insurers giving a premium to the insurance firm and the insurance firm giving bonus to the insurance, so they can accept to offset. Eh? So this is whereby we say that bonus in reduction of the pre premium. So it's whereby the insurance firm offsets the bonus payable. You offset the bonus payable to the insured parties against the premium receivable. The way I've explained eh? Then we always come to another few policies. We have some few policies which forms a, 
part of this insurance fund. So the policies include like the endowment policy. We have the whole life policy. So what about these policies? So the endowment and uh, the whole life. So when we talk about the endowment policy, we always say that this is a type of life assured. This is a type of life assured. So remember that for life, for example, yes, you will find that uh, I'm assured against uh, my life. Eh? That is uh, in a certain insurance fund. It's not a must I mentioned names. So God forbid, whichever happens in the future, uh, everything will be catered for me and my beneficiaries according to what I have contributed. Eh? So for endowment policy, we say that it's a type of life assurance, whereby the compensation is met to the insured party upon death or upon expiry of the insurance period. So whichever comes early. So the compensations will be made depending, depending which comes first. It's the debt which comes first or it's upon the expiry of the insurance period. Then now for all life, whole life, whole life policy. So we say that it's a life assurance policy whereby the compensation is made only upon death of the insured party. So the only compensation will be made upon the party who was assured. Again, it's this life, guys. Eh? That is the point when the compensations will be made. But for the endowment policy, it's all about uh, whichever comes early, whichever may be either death or upon expiry of the insurance fee period. Then we have another terminology called the surrender value, the surrender value. So to surrender, even from the word itself, surrender value. So it's all about the amount of compensations that is paid or given to the insured party before the end of the insurance fee period. So th that compensation which is given eh, to the insured parties before the end of the insurance fee period before the end of the insurance pe period. So I have, to, I, I, I have covered, uh, the, I have covered uh, the good part of these uh, terminologies. I think if I have left out any, because already I have covered things like premiums, claims, we have talked about claims intimated, we have talked about reserves for an expired risk, uh, we have talked about commission seeded. We have talked about commission accepted. We have talked about bonus in the reduction of premiums. We have talked about the endowment policy. We have talked about things like uh, whole life policy. We have talked about uh, surrender value. So up to that point, I think uh, those are some of the terminologies you need to understand. Those are the terminologies you need to understand. To understand. But now the main part now in this uh, financial reporting is now the preparation of the relevant books which these insurance firms they are supposed to prepare. So I will go ahead now to look on the books of accounts. I have to mention the books of accounts to be maintained by the insurance firm. So the first book to be maintained by the insurance firm is obviously the revenue account. We have the revenue account. We have the income statement and we have the statement of financial posi position. We have the revenue account. We have the income statement and we have the statement of financial posi position. So for the income statement and the statement of financial position, I will not dwell on that uh, uh, mostly because you know what it contains. And again, I will prepare a question. But now for revenue account, for the revenue account, you need to know how to prepare that revenue account. Of which I went ahead to make, a, I, meant, I, I went ahead and prepared a, a one page, a one page a format on how you are supposed to prepare the revenue account. So we can look at that so that you would be able to understand the format. So I can be able to display the relevant uh, format on the other hand so that you can check before we continue.
So before we continue, I can project. So this is the relevant uh, books to, to account for, or books of accounts to be maintained by the insurance uh, company. So we have the revenue account, we have the income statement, and we have the statement of financial posi position. So to start with the revenue account, to start with the revenue account, so it's obvious uh, prepared in four parts. So whereby we have the premium, we have the claims, we have the commission, and we have some specific expenses. We have some specific expenses. So this is the format. So you start from the premium. So let's say the insurer had insured himself or had insured these assets against fire or marine. So it can it would matter the question which was given. So you can find it was against the marine or a fire. So you start from premiums. So you start from the direct premium receive. You start from the direct premium receive. So these are the normal premiums they receive from the insurers. So remember that these are the books of the insurance firm. So the direct premium they receive. So it makes to be much a part of the income. Then you talk about the reinsurance premium received. So they say the one now, for example, uh, insurance firm B transferred premiums to insurance firm A. Then reinsurance premium paid, you subtract. Is whereby, for example, the insurance firm A, it transferred premium to another insurance firm. firm. Then you come and look for the outstanding premiums balance pro down. Then you talk about outstanding premiums balance carry down, carry down. So for the pro down, you subtract carry down, you add. So you get the net premiums. Then you will come and add an earned premium reserve. So remember that we said this is the amount set aside to cater for the future premiums, which might not be received from the insurers. So the, for the balance pro down of the earned premium pro down, you add to your net premiums. Then for the earned premium reserves balance carry down, you subtract. So up to that point, you have a gross revenue. You are supposed to get a gross revenue. So you are done with the first uh, scenario of the premiums. Then you move to the claims. You talk about uh, the claims outstanding at the start of the year. You add the claims which were paid. You add expenses, the one which are specific to claims. So you will find that in some scenarios, we have some expenses which are very specific to certain claims. So for example, they can say SAFE expenses relating to claims. So the one which are specific, you know the general, because the general expenses will go to the income statement. Then you will talk about intimated or outstanding claims, balance carry down. So that is all about the claims, you will be done. And that's what you record under the claims. Then for the commission, you have to talk about commission accepted and seeded. And you have to know how to determine this either from the reinsurance premium paid or the reinsurance premium received. The next you have to talk about again is the, again uh, concerning the expenses, which were more of a specific, were more of a specific. So the expenses like Greek or cost, but they must be specific if it's to fire and marine, eh? fire and marine, because like now here I'm dealing with the fire and marine. marine. Then you have to talk about the bad, bad date. So some of the expenses, those are some of them. So that once you are done with the three, the four, the four parts of this. So remember that the premiums gave us a gross revenue. That is my A. Claims will be B, the total claims you get. Commission, C, then the expenses is D. So in order now to get the underwritten uh, profits or loss, you take your A minus B minus C, the totals that is. So you subtract the three. You subtract the three. So, and that is the format you are supposed to follow. That is the relevant format you are supposed to follow when you are preparing your revenue account for the insurance firms. So in order now to illustrate more, in order to illustrate more about uh, these uh, insurance firms, so the accounting for insurance firms. 
So we can go ahead and look for the question of December 2014. That one will be able to cover most of the parts you need to know. So we go ahead and check December 2014 so that you can go, you can be able to know how the insurance firms prepare their own books of accounts. So that is from the revenue account, the income statement, and the statement of financial position. So let, let me display the question we read, then we can be able to compute to do the computation. So this is the relevant question to be done. So this is the relevant question here, the one for 2014. So, and the question is, the question is, differentiate between the term commission uh, on reinsurance seeded and the commission on reinsurance accepted. So I think we have already covered on that. We have already covered that one. We have already covered that one. So which I've said that uh, the aspect of uh, the aspect of this uh, commission seeded or the commission uh, accepted, it's all about uh, based on their insurance, based on their insurance premium, based on their insurance pre premium. So you can, uh, I think you remember when I started the session, I talked about commission accepted and commission seeded. So we can go ahead and read the question. We can go ahead and read the question. So the question reads, and uh, that is B, my area of concern is B. So they say that uh, the foreign trial balance was extracted from the books of Apex Insurance Limited, which specializes in the general insurance as of 31st, October 2014. So the foreign trial balance was extracted from the books of Apex Insurance Limited, which specializes in the general insurance as of that first October, 2014. So you are given the relevant, uh, are given the relevant items, like now direct premium received, reinsurance premium, reinsurance premium received, reinsurance premium paid, account receivables, bank balance and cash in hand. We have uh, an earned premium. We have claims outstanding as at first November, 2013. Claims paid, recall costs. We have uh, survey expenses, rating to claims, but it's written off. Investments in shares. We have the freehold property. We have the motor vehicle, machinery and equipment. We have the furniture. We have the audit fees. We have the director's fees. We have depreciation. We have depreciation on and on current assets and we have management management expenses we have accounts payable investment income ordinary share capital share premium retained profit as at first november 2013 premium outstanding as at first november 2013 so it's not a must read all those items it's only that i was going through them you get what is there but in an exam scenario just go to the additional information one you know that once you know that the question is concerning insurance you know what you are supposed to do. It's only that understanding the, the format for revenue account to start with, then the income statement will be an easy work and the statement of financial position. So for the additional information, try to go through because now this one, we, you have to make certain adjustments when doing the question. So like now the first one, they gave us a premiums outstanding as at first, that first October, 2014. So it was 36 million and 16,800 for marine and insurance respectively. And then we have uh, claims intimated and outstanding as of that first October, 2014. It was amounting 18 million and 11,520. That is 11,520,000. Then we have an earned premium reserve for an expired risk is to be maintained at 100% and 50% of the premiums, commission on both reinsurance seeded and commission accept and reinsurance accepted is at the rate of 5%. They have said the directors are, have proposed a dividend of 5% on the outstanding share capital as of 1st October 2014, 2014. 
So the tax rate applicable is 30 percent. The tax rate applicable is 30 percent, 30 percent. So what the examiner requires you to do is the revenue account for both marine and fire, statement of comprehensive income, and the statement of financial position, and the statement of financial posi position. So as a good student who knows what to do and who needs to pass the exam. So these topics right now, the insurance, you are supposed to score everything. So you are supposed to score the maximum marks which are given in that question. Right now in the previous sitting, there was an equation of banking, 12 marks. So those uh, questions concerning uh, the preparations of those relevant statements for failures in institutional firms. So the questions of that kind, you are supposed to get the entire month. Like now the insurance firm. Why can't you score everything? Because it's not a hard question. Maybe as someone can say, yeah, right now, let's say published accounts might be a bit challenging because that one needs a bit of time eh? and a bit of practice, a bit of practice in order to understand. But now a topic like insurance, it's just understanding what a revenue account is done this way. Premiums, you start with the premiums, you talk about uh, claims, you talk about commission and some specific expenses. If it was concerning a specific uh, risk which was insured uh, by the insured parties to the insurance firm. So it, it will be dictated with the question. Right now, our question here, the risk against which the insured party uh, insured themselves is uh, concerning uh, two things. Eh? Because if you can look at the question, this format, this uh, relevant uh, statement you are given here, this statement, you can see like now under reinsurance premium received, we have marine and we have fire. Under reinsurance premium paid, we have marine and fire. Under the unearned premium, as at 1st November 2013, we have marine and fire. So you can see it was a marine and fa fire. So when you are, will be doing your revenue account, so you have one column for marine, and you will be having another column for, fa for fire. So then now you talk about the, you start from premiums, you talk about uh, claims, you talk about commission, and you, did a, you deal with some of the uh, specific expenses. So after you are done with that, the one which are more specific, you will move to the part of uh, income statement. So under income statement, you know what to do because now for the income statement, we always start from sales, but on this one, we would have to start from the underwritten profit or loss, the one which we computed from the first statement. So the underwritten profit or loss. So once you do that, you move to the addition of some incomes and other incomes which can be there. You add it to the underwritten profit or loss. Then now you subtract the expenses. Then statement of financial position, it's all about assets and uh, assets and some of the liabilities. So for the assets, you know that uh, you have the long-term assets and short-term. The same with liabilities, whereby you have the long-term and short-term. And that is the end of the question. So let us now head to the our whiteboard so that we can be able to present on how you were supposed to do the three statements, on how you were supposed to do the three statements. So let us head to our whiteboard and this is our whiteboard whereby we would be doing the presentation so the first requirement was concerning the revenue account so whereby this one was called apex so it was apex remittance it's apex so it was apex remittance so it was apex remittance so we start with the revenue account we start with the revenue account so the revenue account so for the year revenue account for the year ended so it was for the financial ended 31st october so our financial was ending october 2014 it was for 2014 so i said remember that it was for 
two areas, that is two risks. Again, is due to the insurers insured in the farm. So we have the fire and we have the marine there. So I said, according to the format, we will start with the premiums. We will start with the premium, of which you know that we start from the direct premium received, direct premium. So the direct premium they receive. Let's say, for example, now you are the insurer at Jubilee Insurance. Remember that you have to pay, you have to pay premiums. So the premiums you give them is what they consider direct premium received. Then after that, I said you have to consider reinsurance, reinsurance premium received. So from another insurance firm, eh? from another insurance firm. Then you have to consider again the insurance premium paid. So the one as now, Apex Limited, for example, the Apex Limited, the premiums which Apex gave out to another insurance firm. So that is reinsurance premium paid, the one which Apex gave out. Eh? So reinsurance premium paid. So after the reinsurance premium paid, we have to check the outstanding premiums which were never paid at the start of the year and at the end of the year. So the outstanding premium, outstanding premium draw down. So that is the balance draw down. And outstanding premium, outstanding premium balance carry down. So I have just written all of them because I, once we went through the question, I realized that everything was present. So right now, the, right now the direct premium received, we have a, the direct premium received for this question of December 2014 is here. So the direct premium received for marine and fire. So 108,084,000. 108,000. So 108,000. And we have 84,000. We have the 84,000. Then the next one is concerning a reinsurance premium received. So reinsurance premium received. So this one, I mean, it's all about the premiums which were received from another insurance firm. So you can see the second one, reinsurance premium received. So 28,800 and 19,200. 28,800. And we have 19,200, the 19,200. Then we have reinsurance premium paid. So the one which uh, Apex transferred to another insurance firm. So which are these uh, reinsurance premium paid? So you can see when it's the third one, 19,200 and 12,000. 19,200 and, so 19,200 and 12,000. So you are here. So 19,200, so this one is subtracted and we have the 12,000, we have the 12,000. Then we have some outstanding premiums at the start of the year and outstanding premiums at the end of the year. So remember that the outstanding premiums at the start of the year, we have to subtract because already they have been offset by the premiums which have been received during the year. The one for 108 and 84,000 and the 28,819,200. To because if there were some outstanding premiums at the start of the year, already they have been offset against the premiums we have received for the period. So that is why I always subtract the outstanding premiums brought down. So we have to check that brought down, then we check for the carry down. So we have here outstanding premiums, where it is. Uh -huh. So let us check on the question. So you can see it's here. So this is the time when our financial was starting, 1st November, because the financial was ending on 31st October. Our financial was starting this period. So this is the outstanding premium balance brought down at the start of the year, 21,600 and 16,800. So we have the 21,600 and we have the 16,800. So I have said this one we subtract because now the one which have already been paid, they will reduce these amounts which were outstanding at the start of the year. Then the one which are outstanding at the end of the year, we have to add, 
those already have not been paid by the end of the year. So outstanding premiums balance carried down. So the outstanding premiums carried down at the end of the year, you can see it's the first one. Premium outstanding as of 31st October 2014 amounted to 36,000,000 and 16,800 for marine and fire respectively, for marine and fire respectively. So 36 and 16,800, 36 and 16,800. So remember I have reduced to thousands. So this one was in terms of thousands and this one was in terms of thousands. So up to that point, we can be able to get net premium. The net premium. We can be able to get the net premium. So if we add this to get the net premiums, so you take 108,000, plus 28,800, minus 19,200, minus 21,600. Then we have a plus 36,000. So that one give me, gives me 132,000. So the first one is 132,000. So then we have 84,000 plus 19,200. Minus 12,000, minus 16,800, plus 16,800. So that is 91,200. So that is 91,200. So then after that, we have to talk about uh, an earned, an earned premium reserve the one which they had set aside to cater for the premiums which they might not receive in the future from their insurance, from the insurers. So for example, remember that I said, obviously the insurance firm is supposed to project what they are supposed to receive in the future. So of which in some scenarios, they might not receive some uh, premiums. So they always set a certain amount aside to cater for those uh, relevant premiums which might not be received. Received. So that is what we call an earned premium reserve. The one which was set aside to cater for the premiums which might not be received in the future from the insurers. So the one for Brodown, and we have the an earned premium, an earned premium, an earned premium reserve, balance carried down. So what about the Brodown? Sometimes they can call it an expired risk. So the premiums for the unexpired risk. That is some of the words they can mention again. So the one for Brodown, an earned premium, it was for the Brodown, it was given. The, for the Brodown, it was given. It is here. An earned premium, first November 2013. So we have uh, 115,200 shillings and we have uh, 60,000. So the two, 115, 260,000. Uh, so that is fine. So what about for the unearned premium reserve? The balance carried down. So they gave us a certain percentage. I think you realized that when you we were reading the question. So if you go to the additional information, there was a percentage which was given. So they said that an earned premium reserve for an expired risk, you can see they can give you this. Huh? An earned premium for an expired risk is to be maintained at 100% and 50% of the premiums for marine and fire. For, so 100% and 50% of the premiums. And we know that the premiums is, so the net premium we have here is this one and this one. So they have said 100% and 50%. So 100%, this one would mean to be 132. And 50% of 91,200. So times 0 0.5. So that is 45,600. So 45,600. So carry down, you have to subtract so that we can be able to get our gross revenue. Because obvious premiums form the major part of income. 
for the insurance fund. And then this one will be our A. So this one will be, if you take 132 plus this, minus this, it will mean to be 115,200. Because obviously this and this will cancel out. Eh? Then if you take 91,200, uh, 91,200 plus 60,000, minus 45,600. So I'm getting, I'm getting 105, 105,600. I'm getting the 105,600. That is 105,600. So after we are done with the premiums, the next thing to capture is concerning the claims. So let's talk about claims. So under claims, we have to start with the, the claims which is paid. So the claims which was paid. So the claims which was paid for the period, that is for the relevant year, the claims they paid. So remember that this is all about the insurers claimed against their risks which occurred. So the insurance firm paid. So the claims which were paid are here, 59 to 80 and 43. 200, 59 to 80, and we have 43, 200, 43, 200, 200. So the 43, 200. So the next thing is all about there was some outstanding claims at the start of the year. So that one we have to subtract again as the one which have been paid. Outstanding claims, balance brought down. The one which were never paid in the previous year. Balance brought down. So remember that now we have to deduct again as what has been paid. Paid. We have to deduct. So what about them? What about the claims outstanding at the start of the year? So the claims which were outstanding at the start of the year. So claims outstanding. So you can see it's here. So the claims outstanding. So this one. So you have 19,200 and 12,960. We have the 19,200 and we have the 12,960. We have the 12,960. Then after that, we have to check anything affecting claim before we again add the claims which, are, which are, has not been paid by the end of the year. So I said you can find some expenses specifically relating to claims. In some questions, you will find that we have some expenses specifically relating to claims. So never record the expenses if it's not related to claim. For this question, there was these survey expenses relating to claim, to claim. And they said marine. Eh? So 76, 80. So the 76, 80. So we have to record that. We have to record the survey expenses. And that one will be under marine. So we have to record the survey expenses. So and that one will be recorded under the marine. So that is a 7680. Then the next thing now I say, we have to check for the outstanding claims, which has not been paid by the end of the year. So I said, you will find that uh, we have some claims which have been approved and that these claims have not been paid by the insurance firm. So this is what we call in some scenarios or another word for the one which have not been paid instead of outstanding we can call them intimated so the outstanding stroke intimated claims balance carried down so the balance carried down carried down so that is at the end of the year so the claims which have not been settled by the end of the year the year. So let us check on the relevant claims which have not been paid by the end of the year so that we add. So that we add. So they call it uh, intimated claims. So that is addition information number two. They, seemed, they said that claims intimated and outstanding. You can see they said that as at 31st October amounted to 18 million and 11, 520. It amounted to 18,000 and 11, 520. So we have the 18,000 and we have 11, 520. We have the 11, 520. So the 18,000 and 11, 520. So up to that point, we can get 
the total amount under the claims. We can be able to get the total amount under the claims. So let us start with the marine. So that is 59. So marine is 59 to 80. We subtract 19,200. We add 7680. Then we add the 18,000. So that one give, gives me 65. So this one is giving me 65,760. 65,760. Then what about the second one? So 45,200 minus 12, 960 plus 11,520. Plus 11,520. That is uh, so 45, it was 45,200. 12960 and we have uh, 11 520 so i'm getting uh, so this one is giving me so 43760 so i can confirm so this one is 43 so that is why I can see here, I recorded 45. That is what I needed to correct. So this is 43. So it's supposed to be 41, 760, 41, 760. So this one was 43, not 45. So after we are done with the claims, so this one will be our B. That one will be our part P. So the next, we have to continue with our Next part, that is uh, part C. So part C, we have to deal with the commission. We have to deal with commission. So I will come here and write marine and I have to write fire. So marine and fire. So the next thing we have to talk about is the commission. The next thing I have to talk about is the commission. So under commission, we have to talk about commission accepting. I have to talk about commission accepting. So I will, I will leave a space here to do some computations. And we have the commission, commission seeded. The commission accepted and commission seeded. So in order to get this, you have to understand. You have to understand what is commission accepting and what is commission seeded. So under commission uh, accepted, we say that it's the commission payable to the reinsurance business. The commission payable, the commission payable to the reinsurance business. So if it's Apex, it's Apex is the one which was paying that. Eh? So which means that it will be based, it will be based on the reinsurance premium received. Because now you will be paying out the commission. So the insurance premium received was insurance. Because they said, before I go that direction, they said that uh, the commission on both insurance seeded and insurance accepted is at the rate of 5% of the premiums. It's at the rate of 5% of the pre premiums. So that is why I'm saying, you know, now to do the 5%. 5% on the reinsurance. You have to understand what is commission accepted and commission seeded. So which I've said commission accepted is the commission payable to reinsurance business. It's the commission payable to reinsurance business. So which means that Apex, from the perspective of Apex, Apex is the one which was paying the commission. Why? He received some he received some uh, premiums. He received some premiums from reinsurance. So that is 28,800 and 19,200. So 5% of that. So 5% of 28,800. So 5% of uh, 28,800 and 19,200. And 19,200. So we can do that 5% of those two figures. So that is a 0 0.5, 0 
800. So that is 1440. And the next one will be 0 0.05 times 19200. So this one will be 960. Then what about commission seeded? So the commission seeded, so this one is now based on the amount of commission receivable from reinsurance. The one which is receivable from reinsurance, which means that Apex had given out some premiums to another insurance firm. So it's supposed to receive the commission back. So it will be based on the reinsurance premium paid. So 5% and 5% of the, so 5% and 5% of the reinsurance premium paid, of the reinsurance premium paid. So reinsurance premium paid, we have 19,212,000. 19,212,000. 12,000. So 19,212,000, so say 0.05 times 19,200. So this is 960. What about the 12,000? So it would be 600. So you have to reduce one from the other. So you can reduce either, you would be okay. So you can reduce either of the one from the another one because there's one for receivable and there's one for payable. So you reduce, so you get 480, then 960 minus 600. So this is 360. So this one marks to be C. What we are getting there is C. Then after that, we have to deal with expenses. We have to deal with expenses so the expenses but the one which are specific that is when i say specific they are specific to marine and fire because general other general expenses for the insurance firm will be recorded in the income statement they will be recorded in the income statement the one which are more general so some of the expenses which are specific here we have right now you can see regal cost you can see it's very specific to marine and fire. We have things like bad debts written off. Because for Safay, we have already recorded it under CREM. This one was concerning CREM. You don't have again to record it as expense. So we have regal costs and we have bad debts written off. And we have management expenses here that are very specific. Eh? Yes. So for the others, like audit directors, so that one, these are general for the insurance firm and they will be recorded under the general income statement. So we have to record the three, the regal costs, bad debts, and management expenses. Because they were very specific. Eh? So the regal cost is for the 320. And this one was at 120. Then uh, body dates. So body dates written off. So the body dates written off is 40.80 and we have 28.80. Then the last thing is all about management expenses. Management expenses. So for the management expenses, uh, this one would be concerning 15.600. And this one will be concerning 13, 9, 920. So that is 13, 920. So those are what, the three expenses which were very specific. So for the 320 plus 4080 plus 15, So this one is giving me 24,000. So this one gives us 24,000. 24, then we have that 120 plus 2880 plus 13920. So this one gives me a total of 19920. And that one marks to be D. So that we can be able to get underwritten, underwritten profit or loss, underwritten profit, stroke loss. So you have to take A minus B 
minus C minus B. A minus B minus C minus B. So for Marine, our A was uh, 115, 200. Our B was 65 down here. It was 65, 760. For commission, it was 480. And for the expenses, it was 24,000. So that is, I'm getting is, the answer there is uh, 24,960. That is the 24,960. So the 24,960. So what about for fire? So 105, 600, B is 41, this one, eh? 41, 760, minus C is 360, minus 19, 920. So I'm getting 43, 43, 560. So the 43, 500 and C, 60. The 43, 500 and C, 60. So after we are done with the revenue account, remember we are done with the first requirement. So my next requirement would be concerning now preparation of a general income statement. Preparation of a general income statement. Now the second part is all about APEX remittance. APEX remittance. So income statement. So that is for the year. It was for the year ended 31st October 2014. So for this one is very simple. Uh, remember that uh, we start from uh, we will start from the underwritten profit or loss, which we got from our first revenue account. Eh? On the written profit or loss. So that is for the marine and for fire. So the one you got at the end. So it was 24,960 and it was 43,560. So the two, the one which you got from the two. So this one. So after that, we have to talk about now another incomes you are supposed to add. So before I add the incomes, I need to get the total of the two. So plus 24,960. So this one is 68,520. So after that, I have to add other incomes which might be present. Add other incomes. So for the question, we have to check if there was another income another income to be recorded. So an income to be recorded here, we have things like investment income. So this is the only income we have. So the one for 67, 67, 20. So investment income. So investment income. So we have 6720. So we have, a, so up to that point, we have total gross. We have total gross revenue or income, total gross revenue or income. So 68520 plus 6720. So that is 75 to 40. 75 to 4 to 40, the total the total of the two. So after that, we have to raise expenses. But now the expenses we have to raise is the one which was general. The general, the general ones. Uh, the one which was specific, I think you realize that they were recorded specifically in the revenue account. So we go back to our question. We record those expenses which are general. We just do a copy paste of those expenses. So we have audit fee of uh, 5760, director's fee 
of uh, 11,880. We have depreciation on non-current assets. We have the depreciation on, and those are the three which were general, these three. So those are the general expenses which are there. Audit fees, so this is fees, not fees. Then we have director's fees, depreciation on non-current assets. So let us record the three. So we have the audit fees. We have the audit fees. So the audit fees is 5760. Uh, we have director's fees. We have the director's fees, which is 11880. And we have depreciation. We have the depreciation. Eh? We have the depreciation on the non current assets. Depreciation on the non current assets. So that is 21,720. So let us add the three. So 5760 plus 11,880 plus 21,720. So I'm getting 39. 316. So remember, these are expenses we raise from the income 75 to 40 minus the answer. So I'm getting 35,880. So that is the profit before tax. Profit before tax. So profit before tax is 35,880. Then we have to raise the tax, the tax pay. Raise the tax pay. Paint. So tax paid is 30% of the value. So 35,880. So the tax, so times 0 0.3. So that is 10,764. So 35,880 minus the answer. So we get 25,116. So that is profit for the year. So this is the 25,116. That is what we call profit for the year. Profit for the year. For the year. So after the profit for the year, we have to raise. We have to raise the dividends. We have to de deduct the dividends which were proposed or paid. Uh, dividends proposed. Dividends proposed or dividends paid, eh? the one which were proposed or the one which were paid. So, for the dividends which were proposed or paid, we were told that uh, under the additional information, before that, remember that the tax, the 30 percent I used is provided, eh? it's not my rate, it was the one which was given. Then they said, under note five, the Directors have proposed a dividend of 5% on the outstanding share capital, on the outstanding share capital as of 31st October 2014. So you go to the outstanding share capital, that is ordinary share capital, you take 5% of that. So our ordinary share capital is, eh, is this one, 72. So 5% of this, 5% eh? of that outstanding capital so that is how you get the proposed so five percent of that so 0.5 0 0.05 times 72,000 so i'm getting 3600 so that is the proposed so for paid there was nothing concerning paint so on that one you will get is the retained profit for the year retained profit for the year. So you get a retained profit for the year. So if I take a 25, 116 minus the answer of the dividends, I'm getting 21,516. 21,516. 21,516. Then what I have to do, I have to add the retained the retained profit 
balance brought down to the one which was retained from the previous year, which was recorded now in the statement for the current year. The one which was retained for the from the previous year. So and it's recorded in the statement. So it's here. You can see when they have said it's at the start of the year, first November 2013, 10, 800. So the 10, 800. So add the 10, 800 so that you can be able to get the retained profit by the end of the year. So retained, you get a retained profit, balance carried down. So the retained profit balance. So my answer then I add, the one for bro down 10, 800. So I'm getting 32, 316. So 32, 316. So let us now continue to the last part of the question. That is now the preparation of the statement of financial position. The preparation of the statement of financial position. So these are about Apex Remittent. Apex Remittent. So Apex Remittent, statement of financial position. So as ads, remember the statement of financial position is prepared at the end of the year, as at 1st October, 2014. So you start from the non-current assets. So for the non-current assets, you start with the, the relevant assets which are there. So according to my past paper, here I can see some assets like investment in shares, free old property, motor vehicle, machinery, furniture. So these are the one I'm talking about. So anyway, let me display for the benefit of uh, the fee one. So we have these, eh? even they were just classified together. So we have investment in shares. We have free all the property. We have motor vehicle. We have machinery and we have the furniture. And you can see already they have captured everything because now they give you the netbook values. Eh? They have deducted already the accumulated depreciations. So you just record. You just record. So let's start from investment property 33,600. Free all the property you can see there. Motor vehicle 84,000. 36,000 for machine around equipment. 31,200 for furniture. So let us do the recording. So we have investment in shares. So the investment in shares is 33, 600. We have the free old property. So free old property, that one is 100, 800. Motor vehicle, this is just a work of uh, copy pasting from the past paper, from the question. It's, so once you know that what are the assets, you just copy, you just present them here. So you can see you have uh, some marks, free marks. That is why someone will form a webinar to just advise you on how to get free marks by telling you that right now these items are just copy pasted from the question. Then there was furniture. And remember those are marks. For every entry you are making is one mark. So let us continue to the current assets. So current assets, obvious, you know, what to record. Eh? But now here, yeah, according to insurance, we have to add some few items apart from the one you know, apart from the one you know.
so due to that, we have uh, things like uh, we have things like uh, let me clear so that it can be we cannot be able to be confused. Right, fine. So we have things like uh, data balances. Like now, you can see we have account receivable, we have bank balance. So those are the two you can first record. Account receivable and bank balance and cash in hand. So account receivable. Datas. So they, they are called datas, eh? account. So we have 17, 520, and we have bank balance and cash in hand. So 2640. And then after that, we have two things to record here, according to insurance. So we have the outstanding premiums. Remember, these are the premiums you are expecting to receive from your insurers, but they have not paid. Eh? So the one which at the end, so the, the balance carried down. Eh? So obviously, this amount you expect from them, they have not paid. They will pay. They have to pay. Even it's in the next financial year. So it will be an asset which you will be waiting for them to pay. So which the outstanding, outstanding premiums Outstanding premiums at the end of the year was not one. Not one, we were told that the premiums outstanding at the end was 36 and 16,800. So those are the one which you are expecting, but they were never paid by the end of the year. So you add the two. You add the two. So 36 and 16,800. So 36,000 plus 16,800. So I'm getting a 20. So 36,000, it cannot be 20. Because 36,000, it's 36,000 plus 16,800. So this one is 52,800. Eh? So that is 52,800. So after that, another thing you can record is all about the commission. Commission seeded. Commission seeded. So remember that we said the commission seeded uh, is the amount of the commission receivable from the insurance. Eh? So it's what you expect to receive. So it's a current asset. Eh? You are receiving it from another insurance firm because you are given them some uh, business. So you have tra you had transferred some premiums to them. Eh? So you receive some commission. So we had done that one in our first uh, in our first statement. The commission uh, commission seeded. We did five percent of nineteen two hundred and five percent of twelve thousand. We got nine sixty and six hundred. So we add the two. We add the nine sixty plus two hundred. Automatically, that one will be eleven sixty. It will be eleven sixty all. So it would be. It was two hundred dollars. So it's two hundred. It cannot be two hundred. It's nine sixty and six hundred. I don't know why I'm saying two hundred. So this is six hundred. Eh? It was nine sixty and six hundred. So I have to change this. Eh? So which means that automatically it will be fifteen sixty. It would be fifteen C sixty. So up to that point, we have total assets. We have the total assets. So after the total assets, we have to talk about uh, equity and liabilities. So let's talk about equity and liabilities. Eh? So equity and liabilities. So of which there was a uh, capital, there was ordinary share capital. 
I remember the auto initial capital was uh, 72,000 because I did 5% of that to get the proposed dividend. So I remember it's 72,000. Then another capital you can have, there was a share premium. So this one is from the question. The share premium is from the question. It's not my figures. Is the is the examiner's figures? So you can see ordinary share capital is that premium is that. So premium share premium is. So this is seventy two. This is twenty four. Then the retained profit, but the retained profit you have to pick what you got from the general income statement because after getting the profit for the year, we added this. Eh? We added this to the profit for the year so that we got a retained profit carried down for the current year. So for the premium, it's uh, 24. Then for the retained profit, I've said we have to check the general income statement. The general income statement. So from the general income statement, from our general income statement, uh, this is what we arrived at. This is what we arrived at. So we got a figure of 32,316. So we got 32,316. So that is what we are supposed to record. So 32,316. Then finally, we have to record the anand premium, anand premium reserve, anand premium reserve, the one which was set aside eh? to cater for the premiums which were never received by the end of the year. So balance carry down. So anand premium, anand premium reserve, the one which was set aside to cater for the premiums, which might not be received in the future was so they said that the balance carry down of the anand premium was based on the percentages because here they said anand premium reserves for an expired risk is to be maintained at 100 percent and 50 percent of the premiums for marine and fire so we did that one from our first statement so i can be able to display again so that you check on how we arrived at those anand premium reserve balance carry down so we did the uh, net premiums we got 132 and 91 200 so to get the anand premium uh, reserves carry down we did uh, 100 percent of this and 50 percent of this that is how we got the 132 and the 45 600 that is how we got these two. So that is what I am supposed to record there, but by adding them together. So 132,000 plus, so the 132,000 plus 45,600. 132 plus 45,600. So the 132,000 plus 45,600. So that is 177,600. 177,600. Six, huh? So after that, uh, we can check if there was non current liabilities, but there was none. There was no non current liability. For this question, there was none. Eh? Then for the current liabilities, for the current liabilities, so for the current liabilities, we have the payables. We have the pay payables. So the payables, that is the accounts payables. That is the accounts payables. So the accounts payables was, uh, so accounts payables was uh, 79. 79.20. There was this account payable of 79.20. 
Then after that, I have to record another current liabilities which was there. Like now the dividends which was proposed, it has not been paid. It was 5% of the capital. That one we already got uh, 3,600. We already did that. It was 3,600. Then even the tax, it's tax payable, the 30%. The tax payable was 30%. So this one, so I have recorded the 36. Even the tax is the tax payable, 10, 764. So 10, 764. Then after the tax payable, another thing we have to record is the claims which they were supposed to pay, but they never paid by the end of the year. Remember that they have to pay. So outstanding, or we call it intimated, intimated claims, intimated claims, balance carried down. So these are the ones which had already been confirmed, but they have not paid. And this one we had already recorded in our revenue account. It was 18,000 and 11,520. But again, you can pick from the question, but already if we had recorded each other, you can, you just pick from where you recorded. So we have 18,000 plus 11,520. Then finally, finally, we have the commission accepted. Remember these are about the commission they have to pay due to the reinsurance premium they received. So we have the commission accepted. That is why commission uh, seeded was an asset. So commission accepted is what they are going to pay due to the some premiums they received from another insurance firm. So you add the two. So you remember how we got that, eh? how we got the commission accepting. So up to that point, up to that point, I can say that uh, we are almost done with the question. So the only thing which is remaining is adding the, these two then confirming if it's balancing. So this is 29,520, then 1440 plus 960. So this is 2400, that is 2400. So up to that point, we have the total equity total equity and liabilities. So let's check if it's balancing. Let us add the assets, 33,600 plus 100, 800 plus 84,000 plus 36,000 plus 31,200 plus 17,520 plus 2640 plus 52, 800, plus 1560. So I'm getting, the asset is 360, 120. Let us add the equities and liabilities. 72,000 plus 24,000 plus 32, 316 plus 177, 600, plus 79, 20, plus 3600, plus 10, 764, plus 29, 520, plus 2400. So you can see our question is automatically balancing because we always say that assets is equals to the Asset is equal to capital plus the liabilities. And it's agreeing to the equation. It's agreeing to the equa equation. So, and that marks the end of the question. And that one marks the end of the question. So we have come to an end of the session today. Uh, this is your, uh, 
usual lecture that is CPA do not choy. So you can be able to, once you have gone through the session of this uh, insurance, try to check some extra questions which you can be able to tackle. Like now there's a, a question for November 2016, November 2018, not 2016. So you can go and check a question which is in November 2018, so that you can test your capability uh, of understanding these uh, insurance firms. So and at the same time, if you have the previous papers, like now August 2009, again, you can go and check the question, which is under that August 2009. So maybe once you go through the two questions and you have a challenge, you can be able to reach me. I'm there to assist through my contact or through my social media platforms. So my contact is 0728, 0728, 760, that is 760, 560, 546. Or you can be able to WhatsApp me through the same contact, or you can be able to inbox me through my uh, Facebook. That is, uh, you can go and check my Facebook page, that is CPA do not show or my, my, in my timeline, that is Edwin Ochoi. The same in Twitter, Edwin Ochoi 48. So I wish that guys, uh, you share this video. It reach many guys as possible. They never forget to just watch and forget uh, subscribing. So after I have uh, provided free content to you, just click on the subscription button and at the same time, open the bell, the not notification bell, so that once I upload the next video for the financial reporting or advanced financial reporting or financial accounting, and sometimes I do general consultancy, you can be able to gain. So for the guys who could like to get me physically, I'm based in a lobby. Uh, you can be able to get me at a Commonwealth House. That is uh, around Moy Avenue, 50th floor. Whoever needs uh, private sessions, you can come to that place. And at the same, whoever wants to attend my classes, I teach at the uh, Regional Curriculum College. That is uh, based at the same building, Commonwealth, Common, Commonwealth House Building, around Moy Avenue, opposite. Opposite. Uh, MKU Towers, uh, 50 from. So we have classes on uh, Sundays, that is from two to six. Early morning classes are available and the day classes are available. And at the same time, without forgetting, if you are again outside Nairobi, this are your package, which is well prepared. Again, I do Zoom online classes. So the Zoom online classes is now you can be able to study at your comfort. In addition, they will be supplemented with uh, videos. So these videos I always share. Once you are my student for online, I will be able to provide materials, that is the notes, and at the same time, videos, plus the Zoom online classes, which we'll be doing, which takes place either in the morning from 5.30 to 7.30, or during the evening from uh, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So guys, have a nice time. Never forget to subscribe and never forget to continue revising for the exams which are coming. Remember that uh, education is key to life. Eh? And at the same time, you need the knowledge. You need the knowledge other than passing the exams, you need the knowledge uh, which will assist you to keep going for tomorrow. So nice time. We meet uh, in our next video, which will be concerning the books for the preparation. That is, uh, which will be concerning in short, a uh, contract. That is on how, when there's uh, firms which are engaging in the contracts, uh, what is supposed to be done in construction contracts. Have a nice time.